Hello everyone, welcome to Olive City Homestead. Kim here, Northern California Zone 9B. In today's video, we're gonna talk about collards and what to do when they get so big because these perennial merit collards and other collards like them can get huge. So how do we handle it? How do we cut them back? What do we do with the cuttings? How can we make the best use of everything we get off the plant? And what about bugs? What about bugs? So this is one of my big merit tree collards, which in the winter grows about six to eight feet tall, and I cut back. But then this spring and summer, what this merit collard did, uh, right now you can see three um, kind of chunks of it, right? Well, there were more like six, but I've already been cutting some out. So what I'm doing right now is I am taking away some of the side shoots so that I just have one or two central shoots because this was really taking over <laughs> this whole area and it would have continued to do so. It had sent out shoots um, past that vine there and it had sent out a shoot this way over that pot there. That little uh, five gallon pot has actually got an Amish pie squash plant in it which, as you can see, sends out some pretty big uh, fruits. <laughs> and the Merritt Collard had sent a large, thick vine over that. So I've been cutting them away. I'm throwing away um, into the compost uh, some of the big, thick uh, stalks. And um, there's a smaller stalk there that I'm still attacking. So what I do is I cut off a stalk like this one, which is about um, an inch and a half around. I've done bigger but this is you know it's a good size and I take off cuttings some cuttings and I'm using all varying sizes here this one's about the thickness of a large pencil a little bit bigger and I have some smaller like this one which is about the thickness of a pencil and I have some that are thicker than that because you never know and I may or may not end up planting all these. Probably I will because what I'll do is um, give them away because <laughs> I don't need more. Yeah, I might plant a few, you never know. And then what I do with a lot of the, the leaves is I put them in here and they're gonna end up going um, on some of my beds, especially I'm building a new raised bed right now, a Hugo Culture Mound raised bed and they would make a perfect layer. Now this plant got bugs this year. Let me see if I can get in there. That is the bug they got. It is the first year that I have dealt with bugs on actually on any of my plants other than a few aphids. Now you see I just squished that bug. <laughs> um, other than aphids um, here and there, a little tiny bit, I've never had any bugs. I've never had worms, tomato hornworms, cabbage loopers. I've never had anything and I know that's really been lucky for me. I've only been gardening for four years so I'm sure they'll eventually show up as these did. So yeah these were all over and that was a smaller one. They get about three times that big and it hasn't they haven't gone and gone and on to any of the other plants around them. I was worried about that at first but they seem to be contained just to the collard. Um, if this plant by the way looks a little sorry you see it's not a disease, it's not um, spider mites, it's not anything like that. What that is, is ash. <laughs> because of all the fires, my plants are pretty much coated in ash and it doesn't do any good to wash it off because the ash is coming down constantly. Anyway, um, so yes, I've been taking the bugs off and if you look around, up until about a week ago anyway at least, it was pretty easy to find leaves that were still completely um, uneaten, no holes, no damage, but it's getting harder. Um, and I've taken off eggs as well. If I find any eggs, I'll show you what they look like. They're pretty obvious. Here's a big bug right here. You see that? I squished it. Now, I have tried to look at what these bugs are. They don't really look like any of the pests that I've seen. If you know what they are, let me know. Um, I did have a moment of thinking what if they they are actually um, a good bug <laughs> but no good bug I know of would proliferate like these have um, 
And if so, I apologize to them, but I think they're a bad bug. I think they're eating my plant and I don't want them. So that's another reason, hi BB, that I am going through this plant. I mean, I would have done it anyway, even if this plant was um, had not one bug on it, and even if it looked great, I still would have been cutting out all of this because it's just too much. I wanna keep this plant, I love it, and the other one that I have on the other end of this row, but if you get down here, you can see that it sends out these side shoots and um, they can get pretty massive. You know, that's just gonna get harder and harder to cut. So we're gonna do it right now and take this thing down to a bare minimum because it will grow back. Believe me, it will grow back. Collard is one of the absolute easiest things to propagate through cuttings and it grows immensely every season. Being perennial, it's delicious, this Merritt Collard. Um, but I do want to get um, these bugs out of the way and this is really going to help in that um, challenge because as I take the leaves off, I'm going to be able to get to what's left. It was really hard to get control of the bugs because the plant was so massive that I couldn't get into a lot of it. But that will become much easier as I take more and more off. Okay, that is how small the eggs start off. These are really small. Sometimes they seem a little bigger than that. They're like little tiny coils. They're pretty hard to miss. They're always in a little grouping like that. There's about 10 or 15 of them there. Wow, this is fascinating. I wonder if those cylinders just hold the eggs. I have no idea, but it is super interesting, isn't it? Okay, so this is what I've ended up with. Three main stalks that are about four, four and a half feet high with some smaller ones coming up the center. And I know that looks kind of naked after the full plant that it was, but really this was necessary. In fact, this large thick stalk on the right, I may just put a tea stake in there, um, a short one or some sort of stake to keep it upright. I don't want it to lean any farther to the right. And what did I end up with aside from that? I ended up with a wheelbarrow full of clean leaves. They might be holy, but they're clean other than a little bit of ash, which is always good for your garden, uh, to go on my new Hugo Culture raised bed mound. And I've thrown away about three cans, little cans of uh, leaves that had eggs on them. Uh, sometimes if the eggs were right on the edge of the leaf, I just broke that part off, but otherwise I just put the whole leaf in there and they're going in the garbage. Some thick stalks for the compost and a bucket full of cuttings that I'm going to root for new Merritt Collard plants. Now I have another uh, Merritt Collard at the end of the row there that I'm gonna have to do this same thing to, but um, considering it is the first time I've had to cut back such thick growth from a collard plant, because these are only a year old, a year and a half now, yes. I planted these in February, March, 2019. I'm pretty happy with the result. So thanks for joining me today, everyone. You know, if you appreciate this type of content, if you like easy gardening ideas and garden tours and how to deal with certain simple garden problems, then go ahead and like the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So that way you'll know whenever I upload new content, which I do three times a week. Most of all, I want you guys to remember you can garden and live your way and create the life you want. It's in your power. You can do it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise.